<laughs> Mary Lambert, how are you doing? I'm so good. How are you? I am doing awesome. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you too. Should I go sideways? Yes, that'd be awesome. How'd you? It's like you read my mind there instantly. <laughs> I just try to pick up vibes, man. You're on top of the picking up vibes, Mary. Like <laughs> right away. That took. That was a two-second vibe. How are you? What's new? I'm doing very, very well. Um. So much is new, so much is changing, but I, I I see the same for you. I've been following you, and I'm excited for your new album that's coming up. Yeah. Um, the second full length is on its way, Grief Creature. Yeah. It was like working on, oh, and I also got to say, like, before we actually get started, uh, I'm eager to hear about Grief Creature, but I got to say, for everybody that I talk to or interview, uh, you are, I just had this realization, like, you're that person for me, as far as interviewee or person, like, um, there's nobody there's nobody out out there that i could have the same type of uh, i feel like interview or like getting to know a relationship other than you because it started a while ago you know yeah i i have the exact same feeling i feel like we have the same feeling with each other of like anytime you come up or like ground sounds comes up i'm like oh yeah absolutely i was like i can i can reach out to john too because we just i feel like we just have like we just have a connection i think we were both like really hustling at the same time you know and I just, I don't know. I think we've always just had, we have a, such a good vibe, you know? Well, the good vibe is, is I truly do appreciate that. And we absolutely do. But yeah, just the whole, like, it's probably like our fifth or sixth time talking, me talking yeah. to you. And I can't, it's like, it's like having a, a good friend that like, you'll never have that same type of relationship or friendship with that person or any other body else because they were there so early on or who, who yeah. knows. But I really appreciate that with you. Yeah, me too. So tell me a little about, um grief creature how, how how a little bit about the second album and working on it um i know you just recently put out the the book of poems not too long ago but it's nice that you have a, a, a record coming out as well now yes yes and i think um the album kind of reflects the book so because yeah. originally i was going to call the album shame is an ocean i swim across and um i decided to change the name because well, I guess I named the book that, but, <laughs> but, um, there, there are a few poems that are, um, from the book that are on the record. And, um, for this album, I mean, I don't even know where to start because it just, it feels like my whole life story in a, in an album. And it really feels like my masterpiece. It's, it's something I've, I've always wanted to make. I've, I've had dreams of making this album my whole life. And, it's it's just everything I wanted to say. It feels like my my magnum opus, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I I so I started working on it about five years ago, and about two years ago I decided I was going to produce it myself. Um, the only problem was is I didn't I didn't know how to produce. <laughs> <laughs> Minor problem. <laughs> so I decided to um, to give it a shot and to just kind of. Uh, force myself to be in the studio and and cut my teeth and just figure it out you know I figured out everything else in my life so why wouldn't I just like figure out how to produce um and so I made some mistakes I like I you know I didn't get things right right away but over the last year I feel like I've really honed in my my uh, audio ear and I'm really proud of of what what I've made um I have a great engineer in Squim Washington which is where I recorded most of it um and so he helped sort of facilitate uh, me honing my producer ears, you know, um, but it's 17 tracks. And uh, I think one thing that I missed being on a record label and that I get to employ now are my skills as an orchestral composition writer. And so um, there are a couple string quartet. Yes, yeah, I, I heard a lot of strings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I composed. I composed all the string quartets on the album and, um, and one of my very best friends who's a harpist, I brought in to, to just have an orchestral through line through the whole album. So it feels kind of dreamy. It feels kind of like, um, yeah, yeah. It feels kind of dreamlike, but it's also, this is my, this is a concept album about, about shame, about mental illness, about abuse, about my life and you know I think it really does have the arc of this introduction of like okay I'm ready to talk about all of this shit and then 
I talk about all this. <laughs> so in the, the meat of the album is, uh, you know, I'm talking about bipolar disorder and sexual assault and um, falling in love and falling out of love. And, and at the end of it, I say, like, bless all of this, bless this hell, like, bless everything I've been through. It would, I wouldn't be who you who are. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Without without this sort of rich history, whether, you know, it is varied in, in pain and heartache and grief. And sometimes I do feel like I'm less than human. Sometimes I do feel like I'm more of a creature than anything else. But at the end of the day, like, bless it, you know? Yeah, but kind of like bless this mess a little bit. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's an, it's a, I think we're all beautiful messes, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. other, you know? Yeah, I agree. And and without without struggle, there is no progress. And but mm -hmm. I, I um, I would say you kind of you writing you you're very vulnerable, and it's kind of like uh, as you say like confessional writing, right? Mm -hmm. Just like through real life yeah. experiences. Can you tell me tell so like some some of the tracks? Wh which one stuck mm -hmm. out to you? Which one would you like to talk about? I guess because all of them are, are very powerful in their own own ways. Yeah, I think. Um, but there's definitely have, a theme, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have songs that I love because of sort of the lyrical content or the strength of the lyric writing and some of them because I love the process of, of writing them. Um, and, you know, the first single is going to be uh, Born Sad. And that's a song that I wrote, almost oh God, I think I wrote it 10, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Is it, yeah, it's a decade oh. old song. But I, when I wrote it, I felt like this is my thesis statement as an artist and as a human being. Like the song itself questions like, or not necessarily, I guess it sort of investigates the concept of being born with a mental disorder. Am I, am I, am I really born sad? Am I really born bipolar? Um, and, uh, and at the end, there's sort of this refrain of like, you have to get out of bed. The, the feeling I want to leave the listener with is that wherever it comes from, whatever, whatever is your own hell, you have the, you have the responsibility and the control to get out of bed. And you, ha you have to do it. We all have to do it. Like, it's not time for any of us to die yet. And I think that's the feeling I want. I wanted someone to have is, is a resolve or a resolution of, of pain. And um, so Born Sad feels really special because it's such an old song. And to be able to produce it myself and um, to have my bandmates play on it, it just it felt, it felt really, really special to record. And I just love the way that it sounds. So, so yeah, that one's a single. But I think, um, yeah, there are a couple tracks that feel like the essence of the album. And um, uh, Shame is, I think, the other one is also like the, the core of the album. And that's why they're right next to each other. Um, shame is like... Shame's the heavy side of it, the kind of the kind of dark side of it. And the the bridge in shame says, if I hate myself enough, I could call it kindness. And I don't know mm. how many times I felt like that, of like if I if I bury myself and if I the more I feel bad, the the nicer I'll be to other people. But and that's sort of the martyrdom or that selflessness that I guess some people view as altruistic, but I don't believe that that's altruistic. I believe that there's like a two circles of kindness and the first one is yourself. And if that circle isn't totally full, then you can't come to the table with that bigger circle. And if you skip it, if you skip your inner circle and go outward to healing other people and taking care of other people, this inner circle doesn't go away. Right. Your needs and your, and your, your wants don't go away. They just get displaced. And oftentimes what happens is those needs and those desires end up coming out in other ways that are, are less productive or 
are actually more harmful to other people. And so while I'm exploring that in the bridge lyrically, it's also like you when you hear it out loud, when you say like, if I hate myself enough, like I could, I'll just call it kindness. It sounds absurd. It sounds dark as hell, but it's also like kind of the mentality of somebody that is just like, well, I feel really bad about myself, so I'm just gonna push all of this outward and I'm just gonna be good to everybody else and and maybe that will start coming back. Right. Which I believe in some in some sense, I do believe that like acts of service for other people can be really helpful in inspiring it for yourself. But if you're constantly deflecting your own needs to take care of other people, you lose the ability to be upfront about what you need and that gets displaced. Yeah. So so I, I mean, that's like one small aspect of the song, but it's just, it's, I, I was just feeling it a lot at that time. Um, yeah, there are just so many songs that I love. And, uh, you know, it was really special to do House of Mirrors and do another. Working with Macklemore. You teamed up with him I mean, since, back to a reunion since Same Love. Yeah. And it felt really special to have him on my album, you know, and. And we wrote the song together and oh really uh, you know yeah i said i mean i sent him i sent him a couple tracks early on and and he said i love this but it's you and this is your this is your this is your moment with these songs do you want to work on something together so i was just really i just love him so much and and i just feel so lucky that you know he's on my album again um or not on my album again <laughs> but, but you got to team up with him again yeah, that we're duetting again. It's just neat. And I think, you know, we both experience the world pretty similarly. And I think we're similar sort of storytellers. Um, so I'm excited about that. So so we know you, you, the, that um, it was Born Sad was written like 10 or 11 years ago. Yes. And, and then Shame was also just followed that. But so these are like the whole album in itself is kind of like, like you said, like the, the grand, like you, the one that you just are like, that is, is Mary Lambert as a yeah. whole. Um, so it shows like a journey or progression. Would you say that you still have some of these similar, um, like feelings? Like, cause we know like when, when I, I imagine you were in a different state of mind when, when you actually wrote Born Sad to when you actually mm. produced it now. So like how, what about like now, um, compared to like where you have been in the journey and all that stuff? That's a trip. I mean, cause you like to think as you get older that you're, patterns of behavior change and your thought processes grow and and maybe things that inhibited you from living fully before have been sort of massaged out through learning and experiences but sometimes like if you if you go back into like a, a journal entry of 10 years ago and you look at it now and you're like oh my god I'm saying the same uh -huh. things or I'm doing the same things and that can be really kind of you know, like kind of like Groundhog Day. Um, and I think for me, I still, the aspect of Born Sad that still resonates with me is, um, is the, is the sort of outreach of it. I guess the invitation of it is, is how I view it more than a, an autobiographical statement now. Uh, I do feel like, obviously, I have a mental disorder, obviously, I'm bipolar, but I don't feel, I, I, I have gained enough tools through learning about my mental illness and um, sitting with it and, and trying different things to where it isn't a daily struggle. And I, nice. and I do feel, I do feel really high functioning in my, in my mental disorder. And so I doesn't, it doesn't like the, I think the urgency of how it's delivered doesn't feel as close to me anymore, okay. but now it feels like an invitation for other people to maybe work out what they need to they, work out. Yeah. You know? You're opening eyes, opening minds and talking about, um, very vulnerable stuff that people are, are historically, you know, are, are, a lot of people are afraid to, to talk about and put out there. So what you're doing is extremely brave. I'm sure it's extremely inspiring to so many people out there. I know it's inspiring to me because your story is absolutely beautiful and you're helping people through through what you're going through and what you're experiencing in life. Um, that's partly why I'm really excited for Grief Creature to come out. That comes out November 15th, correct? Yes. 
right. Awesome. <laughs> very, 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 very excited for that. And Mary Lambert, you, you, you are so amazing. You, 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 you are, you're the, and you're that person for me. So I want you to know, like when I talk to you, like I, I, I truly, I'm, I'm like, today's the day. Like now it's like yes. once a year, once every two years, I'm like, yes. Um, I'm serious. And I know I, I see you're in a happy, happy relationship. Cause I follow you, you know, I'm all, what's yes. Mary I said, I see you getting like, like, looks like you're out there having fun. Like, I'm so booed up. Yes. Congrats on that. Congrats, congrats, congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you have so much going. And I, like I said, Grief Creature, November 15th. Um, thank you so much, Mary, for for um, inspiring the way you do and, and being vulnerable the way you are so that so, so, so you can really connect and help others out there. I, I truly, I truly appreciate that. I truly appreciate you, so. Thank you, John. I appreciate you, too. <laughs> I always love, I always love this. this catch up with you it just it makes my whole day brighter i know so uh, next time you know maybe a year from now some we'll talking like the new ep or something like that or talk yeah. about the the new grammy nomination come in or or who knows but i'm excited to see what the future holds so thank you mary thank you john all right you have a great day <laughs> okay you too take care john bye and every piece